I'm Indigo, and I'm pretty jazzed about another Goosebumps video. One thing I admire about R.L. Stein is that even though there's a formula to his writing style, he still wrote so many different stories that don't really overlap too much. The amount of content he pumped out during my childhood is quite impressive. Now we come to books 25 to 27. This first story is set in Riverview Falls, a town where a kid could ride a bus by himself with no judgment or concern about the world. A boy everyone calls Skipper really, really loves his super villain comic, The Masked Mutant. He loves it so much he has no time for anything else. He even visits a comic store once a week to make sure he gets the latest issue. On one occasion, he sees in the distance the headquarters of the Masked Mutant in real life. And the weird thing about it is that the building disappears and reappears randomly. He and his new friend Libby join forces to figure out what this building is all about. Skipper knows from the comics that the headquarters has an invisibility curtain around it since he's so well versed in the lore of the series. Once inside, he finds a printing press with new pages of the comic except he discovers sketches of himself. Not only that, but the new comic was about him sneaking into the lair and freeing another superhero. Through a series of events, it is revealed Libby is a foe of Skipper, and he must figure out a way to defeat them both. He becomes Elastic Boy, and his only weakness is Acid. As the masked mutant tries to destroy him, he ends up getting acid on himself. Skipper gets away and wants to reward himself with some cake, but as he cuts into it, he accidentally cuts himself. There's no blood, only ink. Nice. Now we come to my hairiest adventure. We find Larry Boyd being chased by a bunch of stray dogs in the opening scene. His friend Lily gets the dogs to leave and they find a bottle of Instatan lying in the snow. Larry and his friends decide to use it so that they could prank their teachers by showing up to school really tan. It doesn't work and we are led to believe that Larry is sick from the tanner, but it's actually because he has to get a shot at the doctor. He doesn't sweat, so sometimes that makes him sick. A while later, he finds a strange patch of hair on his hand. As the hair grows, Larry believes it's from that Instatan lotion, and he tries to think of who to tell about the situation. He musters up the courage to tell his doctor, who doesn't seem concerned about the hair. He even tells Lily, who doesn't want to talk about it at all. Larry frantically attempts to find the lotion, but to no avail. Now his face and forehead are covered in thick hair. Lily doesn't show up to school, but a dog with her gold pirate coin and her eye color shows up instead. When his odd hair growth is made public, his father reveals that he's not actually a person, but a dog. His doctor was giving him experimental shots to turn him into a human boy, but that's okay because now he's a dog. The story wasn't spooky, just odd. I think some of these books aren't technically horror books because the content is very macabre. Anyway, we finally come to A Night in Terror Tower. Eddie and Sue are visiting London as tourists and they decide to make one last stop at another museum called the Terror Tower. Their tour guide tells the tale of a prince and a princess who are imprisoned in the tower and some assassins were assigned to kill them in their sleep so neither could take the throne. They are separated from their tour group and a strange man finds them. He guides them to somewhere other than the entrance to the museum and the siblings are confused and scared. They run away from him and realize that he's coming after them, though they don't understand why. Thankfully, they escape and try to find their parents in a hotel, only to discover that they are missing and there is no event going on there. Even more strange is that the children discover that they don't know their last names. They are chased by the caped man as well as some others and all at once Eddie goes missing. Sue just cannot figure out what the people are chasing her and now she's worried about Eddie. She's captured and it is revealed that they are actually Edward and Susanna, the royal children from the past. 
they somehow time jumped back to the past and the Most High Executioner is after them again. They have a wizard friend who helps them escape back to the 20th century. Though I'm not a fan of books being turned into movies, there's a lot of potential with this book as one, and it was quite enjoyable. We've come to the end of the episode. Let me know in the comments what you think, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you so very much for watching.